It's the cell phone line. Uh, I get that a lot. What? Outside. Are you kidding? It's like the North Pole out hey, there. Hey, this sign isn't just a decoration. Honey, nothing in here is a decoration. It disturbs the other customer. And I, if I'm on, on my cell phone, I get it a lot. And people will point at me and go, you, 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 I'll kick you out of here. You go, ha, 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 you go off your cell phone. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> Hey everybody, Scott Patterson. I played Luke Danes on Gilmore Girls, and my podcast is called I Am All In. Suki! Hey, I was looking for your paprika stretch. Hey, what have I said about the counter? I know, uh, but... The counter is a sacred space, my sacred space. You don't do yoga on the Dalai Lama's mat, and you don't come behind my counter, period. Well, my favorite part about playing Luke, you know, having a regular job. It, it's hard to have a regular job in Hollywood. It's very competitive, there aren't a lot of jobs. And it was just knowing that, uh, you know, you were going to go to work and be challenged. But uh, it just the experience of playing such an iconic character and, and you know, the, the feedback that I get on a daily basis from it, it's, it's quite shocking. Uh, and it still surprises me. So, and it seems to be oddly, you know, growing in prominence. I mean, the, the, the role, the show, uh, you know, the fan base keeps growing globally. I mean, it's just... It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, favorite scenes? You know, I, I really think it was that initial uh, scene in the pilot where we see him and we see Lorelai for the first time. Please, Luke. Please, please, please. How many cups have you had this morning? None. Plus? Five, but yours is better. You have a problem. Yes, I do. Junk. I tell her she has a problem. How many cups have you had? I mean, I think that, because that really sets us on the path. I mean, it was a very difficult scene to play because it had to say so much, but you couldn't. we couldn't really tip our mitts about the potential of the relationship. It just... You know, you know, it was a real balancing act with that scene, um, and it was the, and it was when I realized that uh, you know how good Lauren was as an actress. And there was only one time I was really nervous on set uh, was when we were preparing to do the first kiss, and you know, because Lauren and I both wanted to get it right, and there's so many traps set up for a situation like that in an acting sense where you can either do too little or do too much. So it was, the nervousness from both of us was, man, gosh, I hope we get this right. <laughs> what are you doing? Will you just stand still? And then you just sort of lean back on your on your training and your instincts like hey how do i feel about this person how does luke feel about her how would how would he react in this moment i'm very proud of what we did because i thought it was really you know it, it had intensity yet it was soft and tender quotes uh well you know the name of the first episode is red meat can kill you enjoy so <laughs> it says everything about him Red meat can kill you. Enjoy. What inspired me to launch a Gilmore Girls podcast was the fans are clamoring for content. They are clamoring for connection. They want to be inside that show. They want to be involved in the show. We're not making any episodes for them. Uh, it's been four years now, five years now. Uh, since the year in the life and it's just too long uh, to thirst for the Gilmore drink and I think any type of uh, comforting voice uh, from the set of the show is going to engage people in a positive way it's going to support how they feel about the show their lives it's going to help them I mean fans would love it and you know, I, I love chopping it up with the cast members. We always had a lot of fun on set. I thought, well, why not take that feeling and that vibe to a podcast format? And they, I heart thought it was a great idea. And um, here we are, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun and kind of my personal love letter to the fans. 
At the end of the day, the show makes people happy. I mean, it's really a simple formula. And I think the podcast, uh, uh, you know, the intention of the podcast is to continue to make people happy, you know, just from a different angle. It's, you know, watching, I, I watch the episodes that I've never seen before. I invite a guest on, we talk about those episodes and we talk about behind the scenes stuff that nobody knows about that no one's ever discussed before. So as a character of the show, I've become a fan. So I'm experiencing what the fans are experiencing and it's, and it's really interesting and fun. My favorite episodes to revisit are, well, I think the episode where we, we get the name of the podcast from, that, that episode where I, I declare my undying uh, love for her and that I am in, I am all in. Uh, I think the first kiss as well, I think. And I really like the episode where I push Milo in the leg. And where I take the sledgehammer to the wall and say, we'll hold hands and skip. That's your room. Finish up, we'll hold hands and skip afterwards. I enjoyed making them all, but especially that one, because it was finally there was something physical to do instead of like spitting out a million words uh, per second. So really just all of them, but uh, uh, I mean, you really can't go wrong. I watched the I watched the pilot again after 20 years. I hadn't seen it in 20 years. It's the only show uh, that I watched, um, and I was delighted. I thought it was just epic, and you know how great the acting was and how great the writing was. It was just uh, it was magical. The feedback from the fans has been amazing. Oh, it's been crazy. It's been overwhelming. It's been flooding all the social accounts and the comments, and it's just terrific. And, and the fans, uh, trust me, are being well served with this podcast. <laughs>